On this episode of From One Player to Another, we have drummer Chad Saliga, formerly of Breaking Benjamin, Black Label Society, Adrenaline Mob, and currently of Black Star Riders. This is Greg Marr from Go DPS Music Live, and this is From One Player to Another. You played with Adrenaline Mob, you played with um, uh, Black Label Society, uh, Breaking Benjamin, and you're a drummer's drummer. And to me, that's like, my favorite drummers are guys that, you know, I like punk drummers for sure, but I like guys like you too, because it's really interesting to see your patterns. And uh, if we could start with, Chad, if you don't mind, the way that you have your toms on the kit. So I, th- I was watching a video today, it was like 12, 10, 14, 16. But the, thing, the comment I wanted to make is, your 16 is off to the right where it makes sense. It's not off all the way to your side of your body where you have to twist around. Can you talk about the setup of your kit? Yeah. Um, thank you for the compliments. Uh, so the way I've looked at drumming is very martial arts. Um, or like even like kind of like playing pool. Everything has a triangle. And if you know your shapes, your distances don't have to be so far away from each other. Everything is more tight and you're using more of your wrist to like, for instance, if my symbol was here, I don't have to move my whole arm and hit the symbol. I just swipe my wrist and flip it almost like a windshield wiper. So with the toms that you were talking about, I have them kind of going out more instead of in because when you're playing, uh, you don't want to be turning your torso. Mm -hmm. You want to stay straight, especially if you're getting eye contact with your band guys and all you do is move your wrists like a triangle. Um, The Tom thing became where I had power Toms when I was a kid. And if no one knows what power Toms, they're a lot long, (laughs) longer, long dated. Um, But what happened was the 12 was like a 12 by 10. It was a BLX Pearl. And it was so deep that I couldn't lower it as much as I liked where the 10 was. So long story short, I just flipped them over and put a tom on a cymbal stand mount and put the 10 where the 12 would be. And it made me almost like think differently on doing a fill. One, it looked cool. It looked different. Yeah. Right? And also, it made it kind of make me think of doing fills differently. I always like to do fills backwards, maybe because it's the pollution, but I always (laughs) liked how it sounded. So when you reverse the toms, you're already going backwards without going backwards. Yep. And you're also having a bigger tom and then your floor tom and that eight inch or 10 inch, depending on the size you play, it's kind of like a splash. You can kind of get in and get out and use it just for accents. So it really takes you in a creative world differently. Right. I know a lot of drummers, like for me, when I set up a kit, I like to have the ride symbol where that second tom resides. Um, so, but I noticed you had this, that second tom that we're talking about, the second rack tom. And uh, it's cool because you're not actually tuning that to a lower pitch. It's, it's the pitch it should be when you tune it. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of hearing it, da 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 do 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 you're yeah. hearing da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. again, you use that for accents. And if, if that was my main drum, it would be there. That's the first drum I'm hitting. So I'd rather have some thunder and then another attack in between it. Yeah. Can you talk about your second snare that you have off to the left? Uh, my side snare? Yeah, your side snare. Yeah, I, I raised it not as everyone else used to do, kind of more like a Neil Peart thing where yeah. it was up higher and almost using it like a rack tom. Um, but everyone that I've seen keeps it more level as a snare drum, as a side snare. Um, I like to play with the strainers off. When I played in a band called Breaking Ben, I used a song, uh, I used it in a song called Breath. And I would use it almost kind of like a Danny Carey thing where he actually plays two and four with the snare wires off. Yeah. In like Anima and stuff like that. So I thought it was a cool sound, something different than just, hey, it's a side snare. It's a smaller snare. I'm just going to hit it. You know, there's a reason. Yeah, yeah. 
That's cool, man. So you were at our NAM booth, the Sawtooth uh, Percussion NAM booth, and you had like an interactive jam. And uh, talk about that a little bit, if you don't mind. I I love playing with all different people um, because it makes you think and, and think differently. How is this person going to play? How am I going to play with this person? It's like having a conversation in a bar where you never met anybody and you're trying to get along with everyone. So the camaraderie is the most important thing. Then to find out, okay, where are they at level-wise talent? Um, I always say this in interviews and, and to my students and to everybody, we're born blessed equally, just differently. Right. So it's not a competition. Oh, I'm going to blow this guy away. It's about sharing your talent with another person that's as talented, but going, wow, I never thought of that. So when you play with all the, uh, you know, a plethora of, of people, an eclectic of styles of music, it challenges you as maybe I'm just going to shut up and listen this time and see what they're playing before I open my mouth with my hands. Yeah. And doing that kind of jam, I mean, one, Sawtooth had a lot of people at that. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, it's, it's cool to see people that can do that kind of stuff and bring us all together because I feel music heals the soul. So, you know, when you're at NAM and you're hearing a ton of drummers sound like cattle falling down the hill <laughs> and a bunch of wankers on guitar and rock stars that are walking the floor, the last thing you want to do is bring that to something like that. Right. No one had egos. We all just had fun. Some of us knew each other. Some of it was like a reunion and some of it was like going to a new high school. And... <laughs> It was great. Was there Vinny? Vinny Abbasi was up there one, one jam, yeah, wasn't he? he? Was playing. He was on the yeah, kit. Yeah, I was playing a cajon from you guys. Yeah, very cool, man. So what what gear do you have from Sawtooth right now? What do you use? Um, yeah. So Joe hooked me up with uh, four different um, cajons mm -hmm. because they all have its own uniqueness, uh, finishes, sizes, and sound. And myself with ADD. I call it all day drumming. <laughs> uh, you, you go from one thing to the extreme. It's like, I want to try this one. I, I want to try that one. And he just sent me a bunch to try out. And I fell in love with the finishes, the craftsmanship, and the sound is the most important thing. And um, I was playing the spirit. I really like the spirit one. Um, and then there's... Uh, a whiskey barrel one yeah that's just cool to look at yeah you know? yeah it um and i think calhoun's when you go to a club or something are you doing it on acoustic jam uh like an in-store sign that we did with black star i think people are more mesmerized by me playing a calhoun than a drum set because they're like how are you hitting this box and it right. like, sounds <laughs> like a drum set yeah exactly uh, when we did the acoustic performances overseas at the, at the CDs, uh, well, believe it or not, record stores, they still have over there. And those things cut right through, never right. mic'd. You know, Robbie was playing your guys' bass and he was in love with it as, as yourself and everyone at Salt Tooth. I think the, the beauty of taking, saying, yo, this happened, this got wrecked and he gets upset because he's like, you know, he puts all his blood, sweat, and tears into these products, and it's his name. It's everyone's name. So it's like listening to musicians that do it 24-7, that throw it and beat it and go, maybe this could improve. Maybe this could be a little bit better. You know, with the, the um, uh, drum cases, you know, they're amazing. That's a whole nother entity in its own, but, right. you know, he takes good pride in his stuff, and he always, how, how did it work out? Do I need to send you out another one? If I have a damaged one, he sends me out another one. No questions Absolutely. asked. Absolutely. So it's great to be with you guys. Well, you mentioned, you mentioned Black Star Riders. I mean, we're going to tie in with Robbie Crane. I think he's going to be in the studio in a couple of days. Hopefully, we can all get together. But if not, uh, can you talk about your involvement in that band? Um, my... In researching that band, I think they go back a good seven, eight years, and they've had multiple players. Right now, you have Kristen Martucci, who I just love on guitar. I love that dude. Um, Scott Gorham, legendary guitar player, Thin Lizzy. Um, gosh, 
Oh, why am I forgetting the singer's name? Help me with the singer's name. Ricky Warwick. R- just Ricky got Warwick. The bass. Yeah. Yeah. Robbie Crane on bass and yourself on drums. Can you talk about uh, Black Star Riders? Yeah. Uh, thank you. So uh, Black Star Riders was technically Thin Lizzy at yeah. first. Um, and I met them when I was in Black Label Society and we were on tour with Judas Priest and they were opening up. And there was different people in that band at that time. You had yeah. Brian, the, the, the old drummer of Thin Lizzy, and you had Marco. Um, Mendoza. Mendoza, yeah. Yep. Amazing bass player. And I, I think the keyboardist, too, uh, that was playing with Scott at the time was in that band, too, if I remember correctly. But the way, you know, I got the gig, and later on last year, I opened up for Judas Priest, and I was in that band but they changed it to Black Star Riders, even though it still has a Thin Lizzy classic rock vibe. uh, We tried to bring something different to the table. And Jimmy DeGrasso was the drummer at that time that did um, the Black Star Riders gig. And Marco was the bass player. And then they left. Sorry, that's my dog. That's all good. So it makes this fun. (laughs) Can you let the dog out or, or... Oh, thank you. Um, so, uh, where was I? So, uh, when Robbie came into the picture, he was playing with Jimmy Mm -hmm. and then Jimmy, uh, I guess I, I mean, you know, there's two sides of every story, but, um, Jimmy was kind of doing this rat thing for a little bit and kind of conflict with the black star rider schedule. So he just kind of like said, well, I'm kind of tied with this. So they got me, you know, through, tours that we did and auditions uh they auditioned a bunch of drummers uh cream of the crop drummers too and finally it was like all right what about chad and robbie didn't know me damon kind of knew me and ricky and scott from playing with black label but they were like they don't remember what i did Mm -hmm. so i did an audition i was supposed to meet him in la um but i was doing a session and I was going home to Cleveland, Ohio, where I'm originally from, to visit my family on Easter. And they're like, well, we want to fly you tomorrow to audition. I said, be honest with you, my family comes first, God, my family, then my career. So I have to see my son. Yeah. Uh, and they respected that. And they said, just send us a video. I sent a video, and here I am three years later. Yeah. I checked out some of the uh, festivals you guys played. And uh, the thing that was interesting to me was... Uh, you know, you have, you have such a, like, there's no, there's sometimes there, there's a weak link in the chain in any band, you know, and look, I'm not, I don't want to judge anybody, but that band does not have any weak links, including the songwriting. And you guys have a ton of singles out. So what's the, the most recent record called? I think it's 2019. You released it. And uh, what are, what are some, you know, some, some things you guys did on touring with that record and, uh, and, and what's next, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. So it's called another state of grace. Uh, we recorded it in 2019 in February, Mm -hmm. um, called sphere studios, gorgeous place. If no one's ever heard of it, go check it out. It's amazing. Francesco's the owner, super cool guy. Uh, this was the first time playing with the new guitar player, Christian, from oh, Stone cool. Sour. Yeah. And he wrote a lot of music with Ricky. And then we kind of like passed ideas, like they would send it to me, I would listen to it. And then when we met up in pre-pro, we kind of like, kind of gutted it and figured out what is going to stay, what's going to add to the song. And and Robbie and I were a big part of it too, through the recording process. It was a great experience. We did it with Jay Rustin. Oh, nice. Super, super great producer. He's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And a cool guy, you know, and Mm -hmm. I think the camaraderie in this band is what makes it worthwhile. Um, They're, they're a little bit older. They're more seasoned and it's a super group, you know, I mean, even with David Johnson being in Alice Cooper and, and him being, you know, in um, brothers Kane being the lead singer and then kind of st- stepping down and just being the guitar player and doing harmonies that shows up somebody's character. And then, uh, Jimmy DeGrasso that's played with suicidal tendencies and Ozzy and, and the list goes on and on for that. And then Marco, you know, 
being a fusion great that he is and white snake so all of us even newer guys coming into the band were in super you, you know other groups so there is a professionalism in that band that we look for and the sound so i can't just go in and be like all right i'm gonna make it sound like breaking ben or black yeah. label yeah. i had to stay true to what black star riders was doing but still add a little bit to the soup mm -hmm. you know and um I, I think with this new record it did really well in the uk i think it went number one actually i saw that that's amazing congratulations thank you very much i think we toured it from october to november and then the pandemic happened. yeah yep yeah yep so you know uh, I'm, I'm sure we're all in the same boat, you know, like Slipknot touring, Corn touring. Yeah. A lot of bands that just came out with a record tool, you know, and that's the, the sad thing is it's like, this is the first record that really took off for mm -hmm. Black Star Riders um, right out the gate with new guys. It was my first debut record. It was Christian's first debut record and we toured for two months and it's like, yeah, right. What did we do? Yeah. So what is that answer? What do you, I know you teach and I know you're likely keeping busy, but what do you do in this, in these times? Um, well, I've been just doing, believe it or not, I finally got a studio up and running in my house. Mm -hmm. Um, so like if I have to do percussion stuff with the Cajones that Joe gave me, I can do the percussion because now I have a studio or if I have to do drum set, I can do drum set. So I have, you know, a bunch of different options to stay busy if it's percussion or if it's drum set, even though it's kind of the same thing. Uh, I've been doing people's records. I'm actually doing this band now called the Weapons of a New. That's and, right. Uh, yeah. And I did the record and they loved the drumming that they wanted me to be a part of the band. So now I'm doing that. And um, my band, Walking with Lions, we're still working on songs and uh that band's all over the country, you know, two are from LA. Uh, one is my guitar tech for black star riders. Yeah. And he's in Minnesota, Casey. And, uh, we just been working with a, a lead singer right now and myself and PA. And I think we've been together maybe three or four times ever in a band in like three years. <laughs> and we wrote like 12 songs in one yeah. sitting, you know, so it's still a new band, but I'm really, love the guys uh, we have a guy named kevin frank casey myself and and john and they're great but it's different than weapons of a new or black star riders right. or anything i've i've ever done so it's always keeping your 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 knives sharp right keep working yeah you can't stop you can't stop you just have to keep going and, I, and, and I'm, I'm super blessed to be able to play a lot of different styles. I'm known for being a rock drummer, metal drummer. Yeah. That's not my forte. My forte is jazz and funk. Yeah, yeah. So kind of doing like what John Bonham, he, he was like a jazz kind of guy. But yeah. swung the groove was that mm -hmm. one, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of what I do, like the Stuart Copelands and stuff. Dude, I love Stuart Copeland. He's like got to be one of my favorite drummers. John Bonham you mentioned too. So we talked a little bit about um, your studio setup. If you don't mind geeking out with me, how do you record drums? Do you have like a, a soundproof room? What mics, what pre's, what interface? Just go nerd talk with us for a minute if you don't mind. Yeah, I'll try to do the best at nerd talk. <laughs> I'm still learning the nerd talk. Yeah. Um, but I finally got Logic. I'm a, yeah, I'm a Windows kind of guy. Uh -huh. And... Uh, I was a Mac guy for many years. And then I figured out like the, our, my, my drum student was actually a great engineer, producer and musician overall. And I'm like, he plays me his stuff. And I'm like, why am I giving you drum lessons? Your stuff is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And he started to kind of like help the uh, walking with lions band and start like producing and recording them in my basement yep. at the time. I was recording drum ideas on my cell phone. Yeah. And it was just, you got to play it in one take. There's no like, <laughs> oh, let me punch in that part on my phone. Yeah, there's no such thing. So I, finally he was like, man, we got to get you logic and, you know, get your Mac up and running again and just really dive into it 
into the studio stuff. And I always push that away because I'd always go to a studio. Yeah. But man, if the good Lord wasn't looking out for me at that moment, because right when I built that studio, I literally, the pandemic happened. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so what I have is, uh, my Tama drums. I, I just signed with Peisty Symbols about, uh, in January. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Excellent. Thank you. My Vic sticks, my Evans drum heads, sawtooth. Yeah. I have some LP stuff. And then I have like my in-ears by 64 audio. And, you know, all these different things make your job easier, right? right. You have all the right tools. You can make things work. And so uh, with mics, I'm working on a mic deal right now. I just have just a eclectic of tons of stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. that I've gathered over the years. And, and my boy, Volley, who gave me some mics to have, like I have an AKG mic in my kick drum. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm using Samson mics for my toms. <laughs> yeah. Whatever works, though. I mean, you could put an SM57 on everything and probably make it work. It's how you tune it, yeah. how you tweak everything. Yeah. And then, like, how my interface play. is just a pre Sonus. You know, t- if I can do this stuff, anybody can do it. I know yeah. it's the cliche thing to say, but really, I am not, like, I can hit power on my laptop and maybe go to a website <laughs> that's it yeah, yeah but you know logic is really easy and mm-hmm. once you get it you know the, yeah there's some the great thing about technology is i can actually record and do a session with my boy volley mm-hmm. and he can actually observe everything he can share my screen or i can share my screen with him he can go into the guts of logic control it hit record, move, shift things right out of his house in Long Island. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what we've done. I just did a song for Inkelbert Humperdinck. That's what you mentioned yesterday. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's an icon. And uh, literally do it out of my basement, and he can control and mix it and master it and do everything. In real time. In real time. That is super cool. Yeah, that's that's next level for sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, that's great that you're able to keep working in that. As far as Black Star Riders go, do you guys have any more promotion? Are there any other singles? Are there is there any like interactive thing that people people can maybe look forward to? You guys doing an interactive jam or or anything? Yeah, I mean, I've been trying to get the guys to do these quarantine jams, which is so yeah. played out. But you know. <laughs> They're fun. You know, yeah, there's no stipulation. Fun. You could play a cover and not get in trouble. I think, uh, you know, we're talking about working on a new record in October. Um, that's just hearsay right now. I mean, we just put out a single recently. Uh, I think it ain't the end of the world is one. Um, what else? I can't even remember. I haven't played these songs in over, it feels like a year. I forget (laughs) the titles. It's coming up on a year. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And um, so I think we're on our third or fourth single. Nowadays, everything's a single because no one buys records, you know? So they they stream it, download it, whatever. But uh, trying to put out as many songs as we can on this record. I mean, we're really proud of this record. Everyone played great, and it was a great experience. It's just a shame that this pandemic kind of stopped. I th- but I think if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, everyone's right. on the same playing field now. Absolutely. Yeah, and whenever we get back to it, everybody's going to be so amped up to see live music and to perform live music. It's going to be incredible. Correct. I mean, you could have a Fog Hat tribute band. It's going to be sold out. <laughs> you know exactly. What I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I think the world is in dire need for music again, like live music. And I think we've taken that, we've abused that where right. it's like, oh, we can just go see live music whenever. Now we can't. Now, instead of watching it on YouTube or, or this or that, now you're gonna, actually going to go out again and actually like it was in 1990 right. and be in the parking lot and go, I can't wait to see these exactly. guys in about an hour and a half. Exactly. There's that. And then drive in movie theaters. So, you know, we get back to grassroots on how things started with enjoying entertainment. Yeah, you can I never think. go yeah. wrong. You know, I mean, right. 
you can have the best drum set in the world, but it all starts from here. Right. That's right. the drum set. I can play your cajones. They're only going to sound as good as I can play them. Right. You know? Absolutely. So uh, where can folks find you if they, they want to take a lesson from you? You know, I, I teach online mm -hmm. uh, through Skype or Facebook Live or just Facebook uh, yeah. Messenger or Instagram. And then I also teach at home and I usually charge like 30, a half hour, 60 an hour. That's excellent. Yeah. That's such a great rate. Wow. That's yeah. Amazing. You know, it's like, why charge 120? I could, but yeah. I, I love to teach, mm -hmm. you know, money will come down the, down the line, down the road, but I love to teach and I love to inspire people, especially times like this, you know, where you can't come to the house. Absolutely. Skype is another, you know, way of an outlet to, to do that. Yeah, they can just hit me up on Chad Saliga at Gmail. That's C-H-A-D-S-Z as in zebra, E as in elephant, L as in Larry, I get attention at Gmail. <laughs> That's cool. Dude, I got to tell you, uh, Saliga, I had, we mentioned over the phone that you grew up in Cle like the Cleveland area, whatever, Ohio area, and I grew up in Pittsburgh. So in my high school graduating class, we had, there was like 10 Saligas and they're all, you know, so it's as people have a hard time pronouncing your name. I'm like, Oh, I, I know exactly how he pronounces his name. When you said yeah. it, I was like, Oh my gosh, you're like the only person in my <laughs> life that ever said it properly. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. cool, man. Well, Chad, thanks so much, man. This has been a lot of fun and uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having us. All right. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Major thanks to Chad Saliga for being a guest on From One Player to Another. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to all of our socials on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and everywhere else on the web. This is Greg Marr with Go DPS Music Live. Thanks for watching. See you on the next episode.